Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. So the topic for today is top 10 investment books that everyone should read, right? So I'm going to be counting down the top 10 investment books that I think everyone should read, right? So quickly, uh, disclaimer, right? Uh, so skip the financial advice part, but please do your own research before making any decisions, right? Because uh, these books might fit me because of my reading or my understanding of investments, but it might not fit you because maybe you're just beginning or something, right? So with that being said, uh, let's quickly get into it. So yeah, uh, just just before I start, uh, if, you, if you do want to like filter out whether the book fits you or not, do do this right like just search for the book this is the book name uh common stocks and uncommon profits then search for the pdf version so you can read a few pages before you uh finally decide uh whether it's good for you or not right because i do thorough research on the books that i want to buy but i still uh manage to you know buy books that don't really fit me right but at least i have like uh, 90 percent of my books i said I would say that I buy, uh, to me, is interesting and it's a good read, right? So if you don't do the research, maybe you, you get like uh, 50% of books that you don't really find interesting and that's just a waste of money and a waste of paper, right? So yeah, uh, before I, uh, again, before I start, I just want to quickly note that uh, most, most uh, actually all of these authors are actually self-made people and also... Uh, they, they've already successfully done what they've written in the book, right? And that's because we want to learn from people that, that you know, have done the thing, are successful. Like, you you won't want to learn about money from a bro broke friend, right? So yeah, that's my first point, right? So be careful of the information you're consuming and make sure the information comes from credible people, right? So, okay. Number one is The Psychology of Money. And uh, this is a book by Morgan Housel. And basically, it's a timeless lessons on wealth, greed, and happiness. So this one, uh, there's there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of information on what companies you should look for and all that. But it's more to do with your mindset, right? So we we do understand that psychology plays a big part in investing, right? So this book, yeah, teaches you how to uh tweak your psychology and and teaches you how to think about money, right? Basically. And uh, I, I really recommend this book uh, for anyone that has struggles with saving, uh, struggles with investing and all that, right? Because, uh, or even you want, you're already investing, but you feel like it's never enough, right? So my favorite line from this book is actually, uh, a, it, long story short, a hedge fund manager invites an author and basically the hedge fund managers uh, mix in one day more than the author, like his, his uh, book, book sales lifetime, right? Uh, one book and basically the author author's reply was an incredibly re simple but effective reply and he said i'll have some but uh i i don't remember exactly what it is but basically the hedge fund manager says uh, you don't have enough or so something like that uh and then the author says but i'll have something that you'll never have and that is basically enough so that's i think a very important way to think of money right because if you're always comparing yourself uh, to other people, let's say you're comparing yourself to your friends who are doing better and you're comparing yourself to their, they will be comparing themselves to their friends who are doing better and it just never stops, right? And that's the, the best way to go broke, right? Because like you see your friend driving a Lambo and you're like, I want to drive a Lambo as well. And basically you splash all your money on the, the Lambo and that's not how you build wealth, right? So yeah, uh, point number two is uh, sorry, point number two. I'm so used to it. Book number two is The Dando Investor, right? So basically, The Dando Investor is a, a book by Monish Prabhai, uh, Pabrai, and this guy runs Pabrai Funds, right? And basically, what the book aims to teach you is a low risk value method to high returns, right? So he is a value investor, so that's why he's talking about this. But basically, the, the, the cuff, uh, and the main point of the book is, basically uh, low risk and high returns, right? So because people usually think of uh, uh, risk as in the higher risk I take, the more chance of return I will have, right? And that's generally true, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities which are incredibly low risk, uh, not financial advice, but in my opinion, right now, an example would be like Alibaba. And I don't know whether I'll have a video out on that, but uh, if I do, you can always search my channel, search Alibaba on my channel, and, and maybe you can see my explanation on 
uh, why it's cheap currently. So yeah, uh, next is a book by Ray Dalio. So basically principles by Ray Dalio. So this book aims to teach you how uh, life principles and also work principles, but I would say they're basically the same thing. Uh, basically aiming to teach you how to be a better investor, how to be a better person in general. Right? It talks more about how to become a better person in general than investing, right? Uh, and basically it goes through some of his uh, past experiences. And this really, this book really coincides with me because uh, I want to teach uh, whoever's watching this video as well, right? That I can give you information, but you have to decide whether this information is good or bad information. And Ray Dalio says that repeatedly in his book, right? So yeah, that's why I really like the book and really respect the book. Right? So the next is The Most Important Thing by Howard Marks. So uh, basically, this book teaches you about... I know I know the title is The Most Important Thing, but there are multiple most important things. And this is a, a purely uh, investment book, right? It teaches you how to... Uh, think about investing. It teaches you what things you should look for in good investments and all that, right? And also it's uh, common sense for the... It, it says uncommon sense for the thoughtful investor, right? But I, I would say it's probably common sense, but uh, you know, common sense is uncommon nowadays. So yeah, incredibly uh, incredible book. I would rate this maybe top five in this list as well as The Psychology of Money also is a top five book. Uh, the, the rest maybe they are on par or something. All, all incredible books, right? If not, I wouldn't be recommending it. So the next is uh, Mastering the Market Cycle by Howard Marks again. So uh, it's, it's basically getting the odds on your side uh, according to this, right? So maybe this would be better. Basically, you want to decide uh, which part of the, the cycle you're in. Uh, I, no, no, this is better. So basically, you want to decide which part of the cycle you're in. And in, in the cycle, there are micro cycles, right? So basically, if you're here, you want to be uh, more aggressive and less defensive. And if you're here, you want to be uh, defensive and, and not aggressive, right? So basically, that's what it aims to teach you, like uh, the things that you can look out for to decide where you are in the cycle, right? So number six is uh, Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. And this is a book by Philip Fisher. Uh, incredible investor as well, uh, as most of them are, right? So, uh, Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. Basically, it's a really fantastic book. And as you can see, I am eager to reader of whatever Phil has to say. And I recommend him to you. This is a quote written by Warren Buffett. Basically, it's a very good book on how you should look at stocks. Uh, the, the, a, a lot of these books have repeats of each other because, uh, you know, there's, there are winning formulas out there and there are uh, good trades that you can look at in books. But uh, you might want to skip some of the examples in this book, right? Because uh, some of the examples are from like 50, 60 years ago and it's, it's not really applicable to today uh, already, right? If you say something like uh, buying, buying stocks for below book value, yeah, basically it... it it not, doesn't happen nowadays anymore, right? Because it's all been uh, arbitrage away already, right? So yeah, uh, great book. Uh, understand, read and understand the key concepts, but skip the examples, right? Because it's from 60 years ago, so no point. So uh, the next book is The Compound Effect. And this is a book by Darren Hardy. So he's probably the only one on this list, which is not really a good, uh, good investor, right? But basically be that's because he's, uh, him and his, I think it's his father. Maybe, maybe Darren Hardy is the father. I, I have no idea. But uh, they are a father and son duo that that runs a basically a motivational speaking and consulting company, right? And they are they're worth in the millions as well, right? So the compound effect. So basically, why it is on this list, right? Is because compound interest is actually uh one of the biggest drivers behind huge returns in the stock market. And the compound effect teaches you uh, compound interest uh, based on your your habits, your lifestyle, and all that, right? So these are incredibly important things that people always overlook, right? Because they think uh, when they think about investing, they're like, "Oh, I got to plow all my all my earnings into the stock market, and and perhaps I'll get rich, right?" But uh, there's a huge difference between rich and wealthy, and the compound effect. If you if you read this book, if you understand, uh, if you apply all his concept, I I can pretty much 
uh, assure you you'll be wealthy instead of rich, right? So rich is basically uh, you, you have material things, but wealthy is you have your time and your health, right? And that's incredibly important, right? Especially your health and your, your money, right? Those are two things that we have to participate no matter who we are. Even if we're not interested, we have to participate, right? So the next is uh, Zero to One. This is a book by Peter Thiel, uh, Peter Thiel with Blake Masters. And basically, if you don't know who Peter Thiel is, uh, he's the he's the ex-CEO of PayPal and now he, he runs Palantir, right? So uh, basically what the book talks about is that uh, how you should think of businesses and and basically how the next how the next Microsoft will not be uh, operating system company right basically there's only one company that goes from zero to one which is like um, maybe Microsoft is a good example Google is a good example so they go from zero to one right so uh, a big mistake that investors always make is like Oh, I want to buy the next Facebook, right? But uh, what we fail to realize is uh, there's no the next Facebook because uh, the people who are trying to make the next Facebook will be copying Facebook, right? And Facebook is like uh, miles ahead because they're innovative, uh, all of that, right? So yeah, uh, great book. So I recommend it. But so the next one is uh, the little book that beats the market. And sorry, it's right here. And this is a book by Joel Greenblatt, another one that uh, another legendary investor that runs uh, Gotham Partners. And basically, this book is an incredibly good book for beginners, right? Actually, uh, beginners will find this book very, very easy to read and very easy to understand. But uh, even if you're advanced and you've never read it, I do recommend that you read it also, right? So nothing much to say about that book. And the last one is Investing Against the Tide. And basically, this is a book by Anthony Bolton. Uh, and he talks about uh, lessons from, from a life running money, right? So actually, I didn't know who he was. But um, another investor that I really uh, respect, Peter Lynch, uh, he's, not, he's not on this uh, list because I actually this list is what I could fit in. Uh, I'll have another few lists coming up in, in future, right? But basically, uh, I only found out who it was because of uh, Peter Lynch. And basically, he's the man that recommended, uh, I think, the body shop to Peter Lynch, which was a fantastic stock for both of them, right? So basically, what he's teaching you is um, contrarian investing, as uh, Howard Marks is also doing. So Howard Marks is also talking about contrarian investing. Most good investors talk about contrarian investing, right? And basically what he's striving to teach is, uh, you know, you're not right. You're, you're not wrong because the crowd doesn't agree with you, right? Something that, uh, Benjamin Graham always said, right? Yeah. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the, the book list. So that's, that's about all for today. And yeah, if you do, if you enjoyed, uh, because it took a bit of time to think about how to structure this video as well, right? So do help me smash up the like button. It really, really helps me out. Uh, takes you like one second, right? So and share with friends and family that you you think might find this uh, video interesting uh, Maybe they are looking for some investing books to read you can always share it to them, right? Uh, would save them a great deal of trouble because uh, I Personally know that when I'm searching for books, right? It's actually very hard to find good books because there are so many books written by people who never done it Right and basically those are the books that we want to avoid, right? Who wants to learn? Uh, about about you know Warren Buffett from not Warren Buffett right some somebody writes about Warren Buffett there's like 2000 books about Warren Buffett there's uh you know people who think they understand him but they don't actually understand him because they're not him so with that being said uh thank you very much for watching to the very end hope you have a fantastic day ahead and peace out